Hello everyone, and welcome back to another Stormworks video. Now, with the recent addition of coal, nuclear, and steam, we've done quite a few videos already covering on how to build some examples, whether it's a test bench, whether it's a train. Uh, so I thought, why not let's go ahead and build a fully working coal-powered steamboat here in game. Now, we've built a train already, so I thought it'd be a great time to build a boat. Now, I've got just a little bit of an example of a hull here. I've used this for a few videos already. I think I've used it for a stabilization video and a few other things. So we're just going to repurpose this hull. This video is not going to be how to build a hull or how to build a ship. It's going to focus on mainly how to get a whole boiler and coal system in your boat and actually up and running for the first time. So we're not going to focus on the aesthetics and how the boat is actually built, but more on the actual engine and how we're going to control that engine and how we're going to use it to make our boat actually move and go around the world of Stormworks. So with that said, let's jump straight in the workbench and let's get started. So the first thing you need, of course, if you are going to try and do this, you'll need a boat with a hull and some way of controlling it. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to go into the interior of the hull, the actual hull itself, and we're going to start building from there. So the first thing we're going to need is we're going to need a firebox. The firebox is what we're going to use to actually heat up some coal. Now you can either go with a large one or you can go with a normal sized one. Just remember the higher you burn this, it's going to use more coal. So just be aware of that. I like to use small ones, but once again, it's up to you. Uh, let's go and put one, maybe let's go and stick one just over here. Why not? So now that we've got our firebox on, we want some way of getting some coal in there. So you can use hoppers, you can use pretty much whatever you want to do. Okay, there is tons of different coal storages that you can use here. Uh, for our example, let's just use some ducks. So we're going to go and put, let's do a duck there, a duck there. Uh, let's try and put one on top there. And we'll just try and make it that we have a few of them on our creation, just in case. Okay, so there we go. We've got a few. Okay, nice and simple, very easy. You can make that look much better. That's just, we're doing that for our example. Okay, cool. Uh, once we have a coal, we have a firebox, we'll need some way of turning that on. So I'm going to use a simple push button. Okay, so just a simple little push button. Let's just put it on the floor here. And that's going to allow us to turn our firebox uh, on, of course. If you want to turn your firebox off, what you could do is you could have a key switch or flip toggle, whatever you want, uh, connected. So actually, let's do that. Let's use a key switch. And we're going to stick it here on the floor. And we're going to say that that is going to be for our air valve. Okay, so just over there. And what you can do now is when you go to the back and you need to connect your air. So I'm just going to put some remote off. Uh, when you connect your air here, you can go and add a valve on there. So just simple on off. Uh, just make sure it's got the right rotation. They do have in and outs to them. So just make sure you have it on the right one. Uh, and we're going to connect that over to some air. So up to you and where you want to put this. I'm just going to literally just bring it straight up. As I said earlier, this video is not meant to be to make a boat look good. It's meant to make a boat functional. So cool, we've got that. And now what you can do is that key switch can get connected to that valve. So when you want air, you can always turn the key switch on. When you don't want air, which theoretically will kill your firebox, you can turn it off. So a nice little feature. We're just going to connect our push button to our firebox to turn it on. Those two things will require some electricity. So we were going to add a battery on just a small medium, whatever battery you want. I'm just going to put it over there and let's get some electricity on both those buttons or key switches and the valve there. Cool. Once we have that, uh, we will need some exhaust. OK, so I'm actually going to stick the exhaust inside the actual exhaust. Uh, let's do it. We could do it here. Or we could make one. Oh, yeah, it's up to you on the way you want to do it. Let's just add one over here. So I'm going to get symmetry mode back on. Let's do a small little exhaust over here. Nothing special. As I said, this video is not meant to be for looks. It's meant to be just for function. So we're just going to get that in there like that. Get a simple fluid port. We could have put an exhaust here. It's up to you. And that means we've done our air and we've done our exhaust. The next thing we're going to do is we have, of course, our coolant. So our coolant needs to go into our actual boiler itself. So we're going to grab a boiler and we're going to place that down somewhere on our creation. Up to you on where you want to put this. I'm just going to go and put it over here. Make sure I've actually got it facing the right way. OK, so we've got that on. Uh, now we just need to connect up our actual coolant in and coolant there. So it doesn't matter which one you connect it to. These do have in and outs, whereas your actual boiler doesn't. It just has A and B, so it doesn't matter where you connect it to. So I'm going to get symmetry mode back on. We are going to go up. We're going to go down from here. And then we're just going to get this connected. Very simple. 
just like that. No pumps required, no valves required, nothing else. Very, very easy. Uh, now we have steam out and we also have our water in. Okay, so water in, up to you on how you want to do that. It does need fresh water. So we're going to get a tank. As I said in a lot of previous videos, is the amount of fluid you give your boiler will depend on how much steam you can produce. So please just keep that in mind. I have explained that in previous videos. Uh, so if you want more detail about that, go and check out my other builds. Okay, uh, cool. So we've got that. We could also add a TPC here so that we could get more fluid in later on if we want to. Make sure you set this to fresh water. It needs fresh water to operate. Cool. So now that we've got that, we of course have got steam coming out of here. We're going to put that into a small little turbine. So we're going to get a turbine. And we can put that somewhere else on our creation. So up to you once again. Uh, I'm going to stick it over here for the purpose of this video. Make sure I've got enough space. There we go. And that's done. Now what we need to do is we need to connect the outs, the actual torque, uh, from the turbine into our propeller, which is just over there. So I'm just going to go and connect those up. Once again, very straightforward. Uh, we can add some gearboxes at a late stage if we want to. Once again, up to us. Uh, it's our creation. We can do what we want to. And if we're going too fast or too slow, we can play around with the gearboxes. Cool. So now that we have that, the next thing we need to do is we need to connect our steam from our actual boiler into our turbine. So you can see here, I've got the steam coming out. So we're going to go pretty much just out of here. Now we can connect that directly up onto our steam in here if you wanted to. The only thing you need to keep in remember is that as soon as you start producing any pressure in your boiler, what's going to happen is that steam is going to go directly into our turbine and it's going to directly start powering our creation. Now that's fine, but however, if you want some way of controlling how much throttle you're letting out through your propeller, you could use another valve here. Okay, so you want to get a fluid variable valve here. Okay, make sure once again you connect it in the right direction. It does have an in and an out to it. Okay, now what you can also do is we could add another valve on here and this could be a pressure release valve. Okay, so pressure relief valve will allow you to actually discharge any of your extra um, steam that you're producing in here. So if it goes like, let's say if it goes over nine, you can say, oh, we'll release some of the steam. Once again, up to you. I recommend you do use something like this. Uh, this way you don't end up obviously getting your whole boiler exploding. Now to control that, you just use a simple threshold gate. gate. Uh, stick it on your creation somewhere and say, hey, you know what? If our pressure of our boiler is anywhere from, let's say, 9.5 to 99999, then please go and open this valve, which will release steam out of our system. Uh, otherwise, keep it there and then go into our actual uh, turbine here. Okay. Once it goes in our turbine, we can then bring it across and it goes out. And that's where we're going to go and send it into a condenser. Okay, so we're going to grab a condenser. Up to you on where you want to place this. We could place it here at the back if we wanted to. Uh, let's go and place it here at the back. Why not? Okay. And now what we need to do is you can see it's got steam in. So we're going to go from here into our condenser. Let's go up one block, cross like so. And we're just going to get that connected. Great. So that means your steam is coming out of your turbine into your condenser. It's getting converted into liquid and it's coming out as water. Okay. So we can now go and connect that water valve or water over back to the extra T piece I left on my fluid tank from earlier. Okay, so we're going to get this connected over here like that. We're going to bring that pipe all the way across to there and we're going to connect it over to that T piece. Yeah, that means that anything, any steam that's converted back into fluid or back into water is going to end up back in our boiler so that we can use it at a later point. Uh, the only thing that we have left now is to cool our condenser. Now we could add a radiator in here or we could cool it by seawater. It's up to you. There's a lot of different ways you can cool this. I'm actually just going to use a simple three by three radiator, to be honest. Uh, nice and simple, very nice and easy. Just place it there, corner piece, corner piece. And we want some way of turning that on. I'm gonna say, hey, you know, if my air is coming through into my firebox, then I want my radiator to be on. Up to you on how you want to control that. 
Uh, cool. Now that we've got that, let's connect some electricity. So we do need some electricity for our extra valves that we have connected. Our radiator that we connected, uh, we will need one later on for our rudder that we're controlling. Uh, now we can just go in here. Let's add a throttle lever in at the same time. So we're going to add a throttle lever that will allow us to control how much we're going forwards and backwards. So we're going to get that connected. We're going to get that over to our valve here. Perfect. So we're going to need some steering at some point. So up to you on how you want to do the steering, to be honest. Uh, we could add a seat in. Once again, guys, this is not for looks or anything. This is purely just for function uh, for us just to do testing and make sure this all works. So ideally, we would have put all those controls up in the wheelhouse or up in the bridge. Uh, and that's how we would have been controlling it. But as I said earlier on, this is purely just for purposes of testing and building up a fully working actual little steam engine. Cool. Now that we've got all that, uh, that's pretty much about it, really. I don't think we need anything else. We could monitor our temperatures and things like that, but I don't think we really need to worry about that too much. Uh, I am going to add a few dials. I'll add a few dials here just for our temperature of maybe like our boiler and maybe the amount of pressure that we have. Sure, why not? Okay, so let's say that this is our pressure and this is our boiler temp. Okay, don't need to change anything else. I uh, just connect that pressure over to the pressure over there and connect the boiler temp over to the temperature there. And in theory, we should be all set and ready to go. Uh, Let's make sure my steering is connected. It is great. Battery is all connected. It is. Make sure I connect those up to my dials. Don't really need them, but that's fine. Uh, let's go into ones and let's see if this is actually going to work. Okay, it hasn't sunk. So that's a good sign to start off with. Cool. Let's go inside our creation. Uh, I don't actually have any proper entrance way, so we're just going to go and theoretically teleport in here. Uh, cool. Let's get this all started. So we're going to open up our air valve. We're going to then turn our firebox on which should start producing some heat it is which is perfect okay and then once it starts producing heat it should also then start actually heating up our boiler and our heater and our boiler once it starts heating up will start producing pressure okay so let's monitor that uh, i also want to just double check while we're here our rudder is working it is you can see there it is perfectly working so that's good we are getting our big funnel there at the back there with all of our exhaust coming out from our firebox. That's perfectly fine. Uh, temperature of our boiler is going up, so that's good. We can watch our pressure here. And now we can actually control our throttle lever if we want to. So if I wanted to go forwards, once we have pressure, uh, we can just use the throttle lever to go forwards if we want to. So boiler is going up. Once it hits 100 degrees, it will start producing pressure. Okay, now this. A couple different things you could do to make the system a little better and i'll talk about those now while we're waiting for this to happen if you want to use less coal control the temperature of your actual firebox if you want to not waste fluid or water control the temperature of your boiler okay so if you keep this at around like 105 degrees okay you're not going to use too much of your fluid and that way you can control your pressure a little bit easier at the moment for me I'm just using a blow valve or a release valve. So it's going to literally build up as much pressure as it wants and then start releasing it until it sits at around 9.5. Okay, so you can see here, it's building up its pressure, it's using its fluid, uh, and now it's letting it go as much as it wants. Let's go forwards. And we're going forwards. Just like that, we have a fully working steamboat. Not the quickest, not the slowest either, but there we go, nice and working. There's our pressure, 9.4, 9.2. Temperature's going up still. Yeah, as I said, you can control this. Okay, I recommend you do control that in a little bit more detail. But uh, yeah, fully working. What I would probably do actually right now is I'd probably go and add some gearboxes onto our output here. So if we were to go, let's do one there, one there. Let's grab a gearbox. We're going to face it towards our engine and towards our engine and we're going to let's max that out to 3.1 and max this one out to 3.1 perfect uh another thing i would also like to do is i'm going to show you a little trick what you can do is control how much water is going between your firebox and your actual boiler and i'm going to be using a pid for that everyone's like oh no he's using a pid well just use some simple settings like 0.0.1 zero zero max value one just like that don't worry about it 
don't don't bother too much on the details connect that over to the key switch we're using for our air valve uh, the process variable will be our temperature the set point let's just use a simple number actually let's use a keypad i'll show you guys how to manually manually control that uh, keypad over here and we're going to go keypad into our set point make sure you give the you give the keypad uh, some electricity so you can actually use it and now what we're going to do is we're going to come underneath here and we're going to actually add a valve on here okay so if we go make sure we've got the out we do cool go and add a simple variable valve make sure it's on the right direction so out great and now we're going to go and back into our actual little boiler over here so now what we can do is we can control that depending on how much temperature we want in our boiler okay remember the more temperature you have in the boiler the more pressure you're going to build up and obviously how you use more fluid etc 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 okay so with the last little cheap little quick system over there connect that up to the PID which is over there and nice and easy gearboxes are all set up make sure they have got electricity also we could change the gear settings if we wanted to to go forwards and backwards that could also be another cool thing you could do so you could set these to reverse if you wanted them on reverse also and then go to your seat and say hey if you press one this is going to be reverse that could be another cool way you could do something else connect that over to our gearboxes uh cool let's go and spawn that let's go and see if we get a little bit more uh, power out of that now that we've added the gearboxes and let's also see if that extra little pid system will maintain my temperature that i want so we're going to first off open the key switch turn our boiler on or our firebox on sorry i'll go to here say so let's say our max max temperature of our boiler should be 110 okay max temperature of our boiler is going to be 110 so now we can keep an eye on this and that little pid system should be regulating how um, open this is okay so you can see currently it's open at eight uh max is actually one but uh let's keep an eye on that so we're going to wait for it just to build up here for a bit and then we'll head off in a few seconds okay so our temperature is going up to about 90 degrees now and you can see it's actually starting to slow down a little bit uh that's because of the valve here we've set it to 110 so it's starting starting to get to 110 so it's slowing down how much actual temperature it's going from the firebox to the boiler and you can see how much slower that is uh we should slowly start producing pressure now we can actually go and increase our throttle here a bit and we should start moving forwards Okay, and we are definitely moving forwards now you can see we've got quite a bit of power behind us because we've changed the gearbox settings now we could obviously play with the gearbox settings even more and even more and even more uh, to either make it quicker or slower with the gearbox settings you can actually see that's a little bit too slow for my liking so i would probably play with those a bit more uh, it's not giving us the best amount well actually the pressure is quite low so maybe our temperature no that's good so let's wait for our pressure to go up a little bit more Temperature is 105 on our boiler, which is great. We could make that higher if we wanted to. So we could set this to like 120. And you'll notice the temperature goes up. Pressure goes up at the same time. Up to you on how you want to play with these settings. You can also check out reverse in a few minutes. See if that's working. Pressure's going up. Pressure's going up. Cool. Happy days. We should be getting a little more power out of this boat. We are indeed getting a little more power. Not bad. Not bad for a little quick setup. I said you can play with the gearbox settings 9.2 temperatures 115 happy days uh let's trick out the reverse so we're going to put it in zero throttle okay so that should not be allowing any pressure now through the system which is great uh let's put it in reverse and let's put our throttle up again we should be going backwards <laughs> and we are look at that we're moving backwards now not a bad speed either so I definitely think playing around with the gearbox settings will help us a bit. As I said, it's just about testing what works for you, what size boat you have, how heavy it is, how light it is. Uh, we could add more boilers to get more, obviously more temperature. Uh, we could add more turbines, to get a little more power out of this boat. Up to you, completely up to you on how you want to use this. Okay, if we wanted to stop, just go down to zero. Take reverse off. If we wanted to kill the firebox, close the fire, air valve. That will now turn everything off in theory and you'll notice our temperature is starting to drop 180 170 160 etc oh i need it back on open the air valve again temperature is starting to climb up you'll notice our temperature here is going slightly down not too much pressure is still 9.3 oh i want to go forwards okay 
give it a few seconds, and now we're moving forwards. So a very, very clean, easy to use system. I'm not saying this is the best system or the only system. This is just the way I've done it uh, and how I do it here in Stormworx. You can make so many different controllers and little logics to make this work even better for you. You can add some more valves here, up to you. Once again, as long as, for me, as long as this works, this is the main thing. Uh, I wanna actually wanna check what our temperatures are on our condenser. Not bad, 58, yeah, and it's dropping. So that's good. So the condenser with this little radiator is doing a fantastic job. Uh, yeah, looks like we've got more than enough fluid in there. It's, fluid here is on zero, which is fine. As long as it's got fluid in one of the tanks, it's perfectly fine. And now we have enough pressure, which we do. Great. So guys, that's just a quick little video on how to build a coal powered steamboat here in Stormworx. Uh, many different ways you can do it. Hopefully you guys have learned something or this has been somewhat helpful. So if you have enjoyed it, don't forget to hit that like button and the little subscribe button. And until the next one, we will see you then.